Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you here from all over the United States and all over the world. Well, it is finally 2022, and we have a fun year in store for you. This is going to be a very creative year. We've got lots of new things coming and fun techniques to share, and um, yeah, we made it. We made it through. So, hey, Tom. I know he's here. <laughs> I am so discombobulated. <laughs> How are you? I am so discombobulated. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It was uh it, 2021 was a great year. We got to meet so many new friends here through Stamp and Chat. And uh now 2022. Do you have any resolutions this year, Tom? Resolutions. Uh, no. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. No. That's that's my plan. I gave that up. That that's my plan. Shoot low. <laughs> Just to be better than horrible. There you go. That's it. That's the resolution. To be better than horrible. Well, welcome. I'm just waiting for everybody to get here. We're, lots of people are here. We've got about 1,200 of you here already. How exciting. Um, okay. Well, today I'm going to do a fun technique for you. Well, a couple of different techniques. But Tom, did you know that our ink is water reactive? I heard that. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of people didn't know that and they've had our inks for years and they didn't know that they could do some water reactive types of techniques. So tonight I thought I would share a few of those. Now, if you're new to Gina K Designs, on our website, if you click on the blog tab, you can always find our latest challenge. And this month we're challenging everyone to make a card using ink as a water reactive ink. But then I thought, okay, so I did that challenge, but maybe not everybody knew exactly what that meant and how to do it. So that's what we're going to do tonight. I'm going to show you a couple of fun techniques and um, we're going to make some water reactive cards. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using some of the Gina K Designs layering weight white card stock. Now you can use watercolor cardstock for this, and you may find that you get better results with watercolor cardstock, or you get better results with our layering weight white. You can use our heavy base weight white. Um, I like using this because the white usually matches with the card base, but I've made lots of cards with watercolor paper as well. So whatever you have at home, just grab some and give it a try and see how you like it. So what we're going to do is the first technique I want to show you is one that I did back when I first started doing five minute card videos. And it's a really fun way to use a block kind of as a stamp. So let me show you what that means. All right. So I have our um, this is our three and a quarter by four and a half. I think that's the measurement. I could get you an exact measurement here. I do have a ruler somewhere. I have the Tim Holtz ruler somewhere. I don't know where I put it though. You guys, I gave you the sneak peek of my, oh, here it is, of my desk and uh, it's kind of a mess. So this, yeah, this measures actually four inches by three inches. So a three by four. Now I really like this size block for lots and lots of stamps, but I really like it also for this technique because this size is a perfect blend, like a, a perfect mate for our master layouts to die set. So I'm going to be using that today as well. Now I'm not going to use the side that has the lines. You can, but I decided not to because Sometimes, depending on the ink color, the ink will get caught in these little etched lines in the block. And if you don't want to be bothered with that, maybe you can see the lines better that way. If you don't want to be bothered with ink getting in there, you can scrub it out with a toothbrush. But why bother when you can just flip it over and use this side? So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick a couple of ink cube colors. And I am feeling like we need some bright colors in our lives. I wonder if any of you guys are feeling the same way. But I'm kind of done with the Christmas colors. I'm kind of done with, 
the subdued colors and I am ready for some bright florals and things like that. So let me back that up a little bit. Okay. So what I'm going to do is this is the first technique I'm going to show you. I'm going to get rid of that cardstock because we are going to be using water. The water that I'm using or the water bottle that I'm using is the Tim Holtz Distress Sprayer. I love this Distress Sprayer. I say that three times fast for a couple of different reasons. Because if you spray it full blast, let me get some paper towels here. If you spray, spray it full blast, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but you get a very fine mist. If you spray it half blast, you get more bigger water droplets. So I kind of like that because it gives me options. But if you don't have this, go ahead and use any spray water bottle, which are, whatever you're spraying your plants with or anything. And you'll get for these techniques, it will be fine. Okay, so I'm going to start with three colors here. I have Passionate Pink, I have Wild Lilac, and I have Blue Lagoon. And I want to make sure they're in rainbow order, which means the blue will go into the purple and the purple will go into the pink. Now, it really won't make that much of a difference because these colors work really nicely together like that. I mean, they'll all blend really nicely. But if you had like yellow at the top and you had purple at the bottom, you probably wouldn't want to blend those together because it would turn brown. Now, the comments are coming in really fast and furious, so I'm not seeing all of your questions. But Tom, if you see any questions out there, just go ahead and shout them out. And that will be um, that will be great. Why? Why Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, why is there a grid on the stamping block? Why is it so pronounced? Well, because first of all, um, you know, we want to be able to see it. So if it's if it's not so pronounced, it's very difficult to see because it's just etched in there with a laser. And the reason why I want to be able to see it is because when I pick up strip sentiments, I like to lay the sentiment down on my stamping table face down so that the back of the stamp is up. And then I like to pick that stamp up using the block. And if I can't see those grid lines, I can't necessarily get the stamp on there straight. So that's why. Okay. So I'm going to start with some Blue Lagoon, and I'm just going to smash some of this color on my block. Then I'm going to get some Wild Lilac, and I'm going to stamp, smash some of that on my block. And then I'm going to do some Passionate Pink, and I'm going to put some of that on my block. I think I'm going to go back and put a little more Blue Lagoon up here. There we go. Okay. So now that would be kind of a messy design and it wouldn't be very fluid because you can see it's you, you get all the edges of the um, of these little ink cubes on there. So what I'm going to do is I am going to I'm going to have some paper towels close by. I'm going to spritz on this block some water like that. Then I'm just going to quickly clean my space because I'm going to put my piece of cardstock down and then I'm going to stamp this right onto my cardstock. And I'm gonna just give that a minute and just let it sink into the cardstock. Then once I do that, I'm gonna lift it up and I'm gonna quick tap on it with the paper towel so that if there's anything running, it's not going to run. Isn't that so pretty? Oh, I just love that. Okay, and then to clean this, you can either use your tidy towel because it's ink and it's fine to use the tidy towel or you can just spray it again with some water and wipe it off with the paper towel. So that's a smooshing technique. Yes. And then what you want to do next is you want to take a heat tool and you just want to dry that. Now when I'm drying something like this, as I start to dry it, you'll start to see it curl a little bit from the water and from the heat. So I'll dry it a little bit on the front and then I'll turn around and I'll dry it a little bit on the back. But it's such a simple, fun background made right from your acrylic block. So no special tools needed for this one. And I love how soft and water colored and pretty the colors get because you thin them out quite a bit with water. So Blue Lagoon, just as an example, is a very, it's a, it's a darker blue. 
But when you get water in there, it thins it all out and it looks very watercolored. Welcome everyone. It's great to see you. <laughs> and this isn't this isn't too messy. That's another thing that I like about this. But I do always dry it from the back because I want to stamp on top of this. And I don't want the um I don't want to just dry the top. I want to dry it all the way through because you can see the color coming through a little bit. So that's a really fun way to do that. And of course, I used a long rectangle block, but you could use our round block if you wanted to do, maybe you're doing a slimline card and you want to do three round spots to stamp over. You can use different shape blocks, different size blocks. There's, we have a square block. We have a really tiny block. So it's a really fun way to do that. Okay, so now the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this out and then I'm gonna let it dry a little bit. So let me get my- You're not using watercolor paper. Right? I'm not using watercolor paper, no. I am using just regular Gina K Designs layering weight white cardstock. So it's not even like heavy base weight, it's layering weight. Now, the reason why I stamp before I actually cut my final pieces, you see how crooked that is? That's why. Because I, you know, when you're flipping that over and there's water on it and stuff, you're probably not worrying too much about how straight it is. Maybe you are, and maybe you're good at that, but I'm not that good at that. So that's why I do it this way. Now I'm going to use the Master Layouts 2 die set for this, and I'm going to cut this out using this um, this die set. Now everything is so warpy. So I'm going to get a little bit of washi tape here. Look, I'm running out of this purple washi tape that I bought. So I'm going to have to get a different one. I do have this pretty gold one. I might start using that. Okay. You only miss the first little smush technique, which you probably already saw if you watch my five minute card videos, but I wanted to get them all in tonight because I don't want to leave out techniques. They are fun. So Susan asked, if you spray the cardstock with water now, would it still react? No, it would not react anymore. Once I dried it and set it, it's not going to react anymore. And some people think that's bad because they want it to react. But one thing that's good about it is you could layer new colors on top and they won't interact with what's underneath. So even watercolor paint has a point where it doesn't react anymore. This is a little faster than that. And it's because we have a smoothing agent in our ink. Our layering weight cardstock is 80 pounds. So it's about a 216 GSM if you go by GSM. Okay, so I cut that out. And now you can see it's it's nice and centered, right? Okay, so I'm going to put this aside and we're going to do something else. All right. So the next thing I want to do, I'll be cutting more things out. So my die, machine, die cutter is going to be coming in and out. So Vicki is asking, how do we know what weights your colored paper is? So if it says heavy base weight and it's a color, it is 100 pound. If it says mid-weight, then it's 90 pound. And if it says, um, if it says layering weight, it's 80 pound. The only real, real super heavy, and it's almost too heavy for colors, that we have is our white and our ivory, and that's 120 pounds. Okay. What GSM, what's the GSM? We don't have 110, we have 120, and that is 300 GSM. Okay, so now the next thing I wanna show you is how to use, well, I really just used every little piece of white cardstock that I have. So let me cut another piece here. I'm gonna cut a little piece. My mic is soft, you can't hear me? Yeah, they're saying they can't hear, hear me either, but the mics are up. The mics are up? Okay, I wonder why that is. Okay, so some people are saying no problem with sound here. So I wonder maybe if you could just turn your volume up on your phone or your iPad um, or your computer, maybe that would help. Okay, so now the next thing I want to do is I want to show you a little technique where you can spritz the stamp to make it look more like a watercolored image. So let me find a little stamp here that I want to use for that. Okay. 
I'll use this little flower. This is from the Sentimental Bouquet stamp set. You guys know I always use old stamps. I, I love going back and using the old stamps. It's just me. I know it might not be what everybody does, but I like it. I like going back. I think old stamps and new stamps. I love them both. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you what this looks like. You know, I'm wondering because there's a few people saying... Um, when you walk around it. Oh, well, when I walk around or I turn around, yeah, to get something from my shelf, it's going to sound like it fades out a little bit. Also, I wonder if there's some weather issues. I don't know. Okay. I'll try to scream when I turn around. Okay, so... I want to just show you this stamp. I'm stamping it with some passionate pink just so you can get an idea of what it looks like stamped. Let's zoom in just a little bit. Yeah, it's probably me. I'm probably just turning away. Okay. And I'm, I'm turning away when I spritz too so I don't get water all over my, um, my work surface. Okay. So now that's what passionate pink looks like. It's very solid, right? Beautiful, solid color. Um, very bright and vibrant and crisp and very like one color. But if you want it to look a little bit more like a watercolor design, then you can do water spritzing on it. And because it is a water reactive ink, it's going to turn into more like a watercolor. So I've got it there and I am going to turn my back and I'm going to spritz full blast with my distress sprayer. So what is GSM? Well, that's a good question. And that's for another day because I want to get it right if I'm going to tell you about it. But it is kind of the paper industry's way of measuring weight. Okay. So you see how now that looks more like a watercolored flower. I love that. And it's just different. So if you were doing a background and you wanted it to look more like batik, you could do something like that with different colors, the pinks, the, the, um, <laughs> what did she say? I can't believe I just did that. She wiped the stamp block off and I tried to blow on it to dry. <laughs> Want me to blow on it? There we go. Okay. It's all dry now. Okay, so Vicki said it's grams per square meter, but I want to explain that a little bit more to you guys. So I've got, I've got a little handout on it that I will, um, I could even put together that and upload it into our group. Okay, so that's another way to use this. Now, another thing that you can do that's really pretty, let me get a different stamp here. And then we are going to make some cards tonight, I promise. What did I do with my stamp set? Here it is, right in front of me. Okay. Another thing that's really pretty is you can mix ink. You can mix our ink with watercolor markers. And I think that is a really fun technique as well. This stamp might be a little big to do it. Let's see. I might grab one. I just don't know if this is going to fit on the block, but it might. Oh, it does. Okay. What stamp set is that? This is the Friendly Silhouettes. This is the new one that just came out. It's this stamp set right here that I've been doing a lot of cards with. Uh, Lisa, you do not need a blog to upload cards for the challenge. You absolutely do not. You can upload them right into the in links that's on the blog. So you can just upload your photo. You don't need a blog. Okay, I'm gonna turn around for a second. I need a big stamp. Okay. Um, let's do, let's do Moonlit Fog. And then I'm going to pick a marker here. This is a cool marker. This is Tombow 679. Let's just take a look at this color. Oh, that's dark. I'm going to go a little lighter than that. So Robin asks, will you get a different look if you spray water on the paper and then stamp the ink image? Um, yeah, you might. You might. Um, if I was going to do that, I would probably use watercolor paper as opposed to, I know I'm fading in and out, I'm turning around. Um, I would use watercolor paper as opposed to this kind of paper, though, because getting this whole sheet of paper wet, probably it would start to pill. And if you wanted to stamp on it later. So I would do that with watercolor paper. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some Moonlit Fog on this design. Let me ink this up. Yeah, I know, I kind of fade out when I turn around. Okay. And then I'm going to take this Tombow marker. This is 757. And I am going to just tap some of this color all over that Moonlit Fog. I like this color combination, kind of a plum and a gray together. I think it's interesting. And see how I'm kind of turning the block as I go? That's because I don't want all the lines to be exactly facing in the same direction, although we are going to spritz them. So this is kind of a thumping technique, but I want to show you how the ink is water reactive and how it works with a water-based or watercolor marker like a Tombow. Okay, so now I'm gonna spritz this with my spritzer. I'm just gonna let it sit for a minute so that it can do its thing. Okay, and then I'm going to stamp it. Isn't that so pretty? So that's a real watercolory look. Yes, this stamp set is Friendly Silhouettes. And I gotta clean this because I'm probably gonna use this on one of my cards tonight. Okay, somebody wanna blow on this for me? <laughs> now as this dries, it really, it really looks like you took a watercolor paintbrush and just painted that. so different and the color combination is really cool and that's so simple like imagine just here I'll, let me grab my paper cutter and get the rest of this off of here but imagine how pretty something like this would look just a plain white card and then just a big hello on top of it or something like that where it's just so soft in the background and you're focusing on the greeting but you've got that watercolory look behind there or even a little strip sentiment going across would be perfect for it if you wanted to see more of this design so i'll keep this one for another project okay so now the next one that we're going to do is i'm going to cut a piece of this down and I'm going to cut it to, um, let's go, let's go three, three and a half inches. We're going to cut it like it was a master layouts too, by four and a quarter inches. And then I'm going to cut some masking magic. So I want to make sure this is going to be big enough, and it will. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut quarter-inch strips. So I'm going to go to the closest half-inch. Okay. And now I'm going to cut quarter-inch strips. So I'm just going to move this down a quarter of an inch, and then a quarter of an inch, and then a quarter of an inch, and then a quarter of an inch. Okay. Okay. Now, you could also make these bigger if you want. Totally up to you. What I'm going to do here now... Somebody just asked about a date, and I didn't see that comment. Ask that comment again. <laughs> we do have a release coming up toward the end of this month. Oh my gosh, I'm shedding. All right, so it's a little difficult to see because... Oh, I didn't even realize... <laughs> There was a split in the back of this piece. Oh my word. So I'm going to just kind of block off the edges. And all these techniques, I've done them before, but tell the truth, don't you forget about them? Like after the next video, it's like out of sight, out of mind. I forget about them too. And then I remember how much fun this is to just go around the edge with masking magic. If you don't have masking magic, you can use purple tape for this. Um, also you could use, 
Well, you could use washi, but if you're going to use washi tape, I highly recommend that you tap it off several times on your clothing before you um, put it down because it's it's stickier. Washi tape is stickier than Masking Magic and, and the purple tape. Okay. All right. Now this one's going to go on this side. And then the last one. Yeah, I think so too. Masking Magic does leave a good clean edge. I don't know why I'm struggling trying to see when I could just turn the paper around. Alrighty. And I always forget to do this. I, get, I go in waves. Like sometimes I remember and then other times. Now, if you're worried at all that any of your cardstock is going to get any color on it, you can always just throw a few post-it notes around the edge. But you know that your edge is going to be super crisp and very even. I'm just a little worried because I don't know if I if I got it perfect. So I do reuse the post-it notes. These I might not, depending on how wet they get. But we'll see. I just really don't want anything to go over the edge. Now, if you're worried too, you can always cut your edge, your card bigger, and then cut your masking magic strips to a half inch and then go around and trim a quarter of an inch off again so that you don't have to do the post-it notes, but I'm not worried about the post-it notes. And Lisa got me these post-it notes that match my color. So thank you, Lisa, if you're watching. She's our warehouse manager and she's awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to pick a color here. And I think since we did the pinks, purples, and blues, look how pretty that's drying up. Isn't that so pretty? Since we did the pinks, purples, and blues on this one, I think we need to get some green in here for sure. So, let's do Lucky Clover. We could do Blue Lagoon again. We could just do those two colors for this. And this is very similar to my challenge card, but you know me, I can't help it with the blues and the greens. I love it. So I'm going to start with some Blue Lagoon. I use a lot of turquoise sea. So this is, see what I just did? That's going to wreak havoc with the entire night. I got to get it off. Okay. <laughs> Put my finger right in it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start with some Blue Lagoon. Normally I use turquoise sea, so it will be a little bit different. And I'm going to add some color in here. And I'm going to add some color over here. And then I'm going to add some color over here. Okay. So now I'm going to get my Lucky Clover. And then we're going to add some Lucky Clover to this. And we're going to go back and forth between these colors until we get a really super clean blend. This, this technique is also really cool to do on rainbow. So if you want to do a rainbow ink blend, that's a great thing to do with this particular technique. All right. Got a lot of green in there. So I'm going to go back and add some more blue. I love when the blue and green mix and you get that, I don't know, it's like emerald or something. Um, well, Masking Magic, I don't know why they, I mean, they made it white because it's easy to stamp on. And if you wanted to stamp on it and mask off like little critters and things like that, it's it looks a lot like the cardstock. It's pretty easy to see in real life. It might be a little difficult to see on screen. I'm sorry about that. 
Okay, and I'm, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just going back and forth, just trying to remove some of the lines of demarcation between those colors. Okay, so that's a pretty good blend. And remember, I never worry if it doesn't look perfect because of the smoothing agent, it's going to smooth right out and it's gonna look flawless. All right, so I'm gonna give that just a minute. Let me get these out of the way. All right, so here we go. Now I'm going to spritz on this and I'm gonna use a half spritz so I get some bigger droplets in there. Okay, so let's just spritz a little bit on there. Isn't that so pretty? Okay, and then I'm just gonna blot that right up. This is on the Gina K Designs white layering cardstock. Isn't that pretty? And I'm gonna just leave it right on there and I'm gonna dry it. Oh, I just love the way that looks. I like the colors together too, thank you. Yeah, just like magic. It's almost like, um, well, I can't really tell you about new colors until later this month. So hang in there. <laughs> How's that for giving away a secret? Okay. All right, so we wanna make sure that this is nice and dry because I wanna stamp on this. You will feel the little white dots. I know a lot of people don't know that our ink does that. I just love that. Ooh. My God, a bug just fell from the ceiling on me. Did anybody see that? I really hope it's not in my hair. I got to tell you, the other night I was home and I was sitting in my living room, minding my old my own business, watching some Everybody Loves Raymond episode, and there was a bug on the ceiling and it fell in my hair. And I, I think I'm just, I have like some kind of bug PTSD from that. So something just fell from the ceiling. Okay, now that's only ripping the masking magic, so don't worry. <laughs> that is the worst feeling. I'm not a bug fan. It's, it's the only thing that I think is good about this cold weather that we're having is that things leave. Okay, so now I'm gonna peel this masking magic off gently. Oh, I like this. I know once something like that, a spider drops down or something, forget it, you know, forever you're just traumatized. Okay, so isn't that pretty? It does bug me. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't know that that our inks are water reactive like that. So, okay, so now we've got this background and we've got this background. Two completely different techniques, very different looks, but still really pretty backgrounds to stamp on. So let's stamp on these. Let me see. I'm going to step away for just a second. I promise I'll be back. Okay. So I love this new set, and I think I wanna use the butterflies on one. And then I'm also gonna go back to natural silhouettes and use one of these images, I think. This would be really pretty on there too, though, wouldn't it? I could use this one right on there. Let me use the new set. Since a lot of you have the brand new set and you're looking for ideas, I will just use the new set. Okay, so let's go with the butterflies. I'm gonna do the butterflies by hand. Which one should I do? Should I do this on here or should I do this on here? Which one do you guys want me to do? Should I do this on to the green and blue or on to the one with pink and purple? I'm waiting. I'm waiting, I wanna see what you guys say. Okay, so. Okay, the one with the green, huh? You like this with the green? 
pink and purple. Okay, I'm seeing more green and blues for this one. But never fear, because that means that I can do the butterflies with the pink and purple. And that will be really beautiful, too. So let's do that. Okay. So I will start with this one, since this one is completely dry. I know I'm always disappointing somebody <laughs> with my, with my um, asking. I know. But I like to hear what you have to say. And you know what? Both are going to look fine, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the middle. I'm going to do kind of a like a straight across one. And then I'm going to have one coming out where his little wing is going to go outside. And then one down here where a little bit of the wings goes outside. Okay, that's my plan. And you only need like two or three colors to really make this look cool with this water reactive stuff. Okay, so I might turn it just a little bit in the center so it's in case it's not perfect. We'll see. Maybe I'll just tilt it a little bit like this. Okay, and I really want to give it a chance to transfer. I love all the crackles in that. And this will go down here. And this one will go up like that. You know, Tom's music is so relaxing, isn't it? Okay, here we go. I like that they're just kind of like flowing off the card. Alrighty. So I'm gonna put that aside. And now this one I'm gonna use in the Misty because I might have to stamp it more than once. And the reason I say that is because these little water dots are just ever so slightly raised. And that's because I didn't use watercolor paper, but that's okay. You don't have to use watercolor paper to make this technique work. This one would be gorgeous on there too. You gotta try this. You guys just have to go have fun with this. I wonder if I went a little bit up higher and then I did like, like a birthday greeting below it. That might be too much. I'm gonna go right in the center and I'm gonna do something more delicate for the greeting. Okay, that looks pretty good. This isn't really as much about the cards as it is the technique. I hope you guys, I hope you guys agree with that. Okay, so I'm going to ink up my stamp with black onyx here. And then I am going to use my Chucky tool. And if you're new to my channel, I say this all the time, and I know you guys have been with me forever. Like, why do you keep telling us this? But I always have new people watching, and that's the first thing they say is, what is this tool? It's a tool that my friend Chuck Meadows made for me, and he made it out of, let me see if I turn that at all. No, I think that's good. He made it out of a curtain finial and a furniture protector pad. He glued them together and made me a nice pressure tool for my Misty. Just need to move this out of the way so I can get the bottom of these. They didn't stamp. Okay, there we go. Uh, it's just so simple, right? Love the simplicity of these designs. And you know, if you wanted to, you could make these on the thicker 120 pound white card stock. And these would even be kind of cool postcards to send in the mail. You wouldn't have to do so much to them. 
I need to make a postcard stamp where you could stamp the back like a postcard. Wouldn't that be fun? We could make a bunch of postcards together. I've been thinking about that now for about six months. Doing nothing about it, just thinking about it. <laughs> okay, let's see. We could do a very simple greeting down at the bottom on this one. Like, happy birthday right along there. I think that would be pretty. Let's do that. We'll make this super simple. And I do need a birthday card, so. Now I have a, a style. I never keep my cards anymore, but at least I have an idea. Okay. So, I'll put that there. We're going to stamp it right on the color part. Let go of me. This is always the scariest part, isn't it? Putting the greeting on. Let me see if I can just move it with the craft pick. No, I can't. I gave that up before I even tried. Okay. I think that'll do it. Hey, and the best thing is, if this doesn't work, I can stamp onto a strip sentiment and cover it. So I think that should work. Now, if you're ever in this position and you're really nervous, one thing that you can do is just find one of your old stamp sets, like a little one like this, that has, let me find a different one. Here's a, here's a mini stamp set. Okay. You can take a mini stamp set, just take the acetate sheet and just put it down on your project and just put your magnet down. Then you can ink this up and stamp it to see if you like where it stamps. Now you're not going to see it super dark because it's going to stamp on acetate. You could also do this with vellum. But you can stamp it and kind of get an idea. Do I like where it is? Can you see it real faint there? And I think that looks pretty good and pretty straight. So I can take this off and now I can do that again. You can use vellum for it too, and you're able to see through the vellum pretty easy, especially in something this bright. Okay. So I like the way it looked. I still like the way it looks. I think that's really simple. Very simple birthday card. <laughs> All right. So let me find this piece and clean it so that I don't create drama for myself at another time. You got to clean that acetate. Don't forget. It'll be a, another traumatic event in my life. Okay. And then we've got to do something with this one. And I think I have an idea for this one. I'm going to pull out that sentimental bouquet again. But you can use any little stamp. You must have little stamps in your collection. You probably have too many and you don't know what to do with them. So what I'm thinking for this is something real simple, like just a little thank you right in here. Like that. I probably even have smaller stamps than that because we do our best to put tiny little stamps into things. Here's a stamp set by Hannah. And it just has a little hello in there. I'm not sure what this is. This is her June set. I'd have to look. But if somebody knows what her June stamp set is, please tell me the name. I'm going to put the hello in there. But any tiny little stamp will do. Especially something that has these big bold stamps. It's a nice contrast to have just a delicate little greeting with the bigger, bolder stamps. Okay, now I'm going to try to ink this up and not make a complete mess. I do really like using ink cubes for this. Let me get my ink cube. I need my black ink cube. Here it is. I'm going to use the ink cube to ink this up. Just because I have more control with little stamps this way. Here it is. And then I'm gonna show you guys something else tonight too, because you ask me this a lot. You ask me how to re-ink an ink cube or an ink pad. 
and both my black ink cube and pad need to be re-inked. There, that's perfect. Isn't that nice? So simple. All right, so now we just need our little black layer and these can go right onto white card bases and we're gonna give these away tonight. But before we do the finished assembly, hang in there because we're going to give them away. And if you're new and you want to know how to enter to win, just drop a comment. That's all you have to do. Leave a comment. I'd also love it if you're watching me on YouTube, if you'd subscribe to my channel, that'd be awesome. But uh, it's a great way. You can hit the notification bell too, and then you'll never miss another video. Okay. So here is the Black Onyx Reinker. And people ask me all the time, how do you re-ink a little cube and how do you re-ink a pad? And it's very simple. So this is the way I do it. I don't over squeeze and I don't over ink. What I do is I, I draw Z's. Okay, so I'm going to squeeze this and I'm going to draw like Z's going down the ink pad. Then I'm going to turn it a quarter turn. I'm going to draw more Z's turn it another quarter turn, draw a few more Z's, and one more quarter turn, and draw a few more Z's. Then I let it sit for a little while because the ink is going to expand out, and you have crisscrossed the ink. Just let it sit for a little bit. Don't use it right away. Just let it sit for a little bit. Same with this ink cube. I'm going to draw a Z going this way, and then I'm going to turn it, draw another little Z, 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 Z. There we go. And so now they're re-inked. Super easy. Okay. And then I'm going to let them sit. That ink will spread, and it will it'll be nice and dark again. You can definitely see that I've been needing to do that for a while because these are kind of light. Um, normally, I I like them. I like my black to be really black like that, but that was stamped twice. Um, so our darkest black ink would be our Obsidian Amalgam ink. That is the darkest black ink that is available. Actually, our manufacturer, um, we asked them for the darkest pigment that they could do. And we replaced our jet black, which was pretty dark with obsidian because it was even darker. But if you have an old jet black amalgam ink pad, you can re-ink it with obsidian. You can't mix amalgam ink and dye ink. Our darkest dye ink is black onyx. It's our only black for dye ink. And obsidian is our only black now for amalgam ink. Okay, so I'm gonna cut two quick, I'll just do them by hand here two quick layers for the backs of these cards. I need one to be, I need them both to be three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. And I say that with so much confidence, but I will check it just to make sure I know what I'm talking about. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I think I have to cut this just a little bit more. Nothing is like cutting it with those Master Layouts dies. They're always perfect. I'm always going back and poking around with the paper cutter when I don't use them. But that's pretty good. And we're going to do one more for that one. Three and five eighths. Five, four, and seven eighths. Now, when you use our dye inks as water reactive inks, you definitely want to make sure that you use a little bit of extra tape because you can see the cardstock is a little bit warped from the water. So just use a little bit of extra tape on the back. So I'm definitely going to go around the entire perimeter instead of doing my little corner bit that I usually do. And then I'm going to do like a little thing down in thirds. This way it'll stick everywhere. I'm covered with ink. But that's how one should be after crafting, right? Okay, here we go. And then that whole panel is going to go onto a white card base. And that really sets it off nice, doesn't it? 
So the amalgam ink is best used when you want to do anything with water. So if you wanted watercolor, then use the amalgam ink. If you want to do colored pencils and Gamsol and then add a little watercolor background over it, or you want to do some Copic markers and mix some watercolor, amalgam ink is your ink. It's also the best ink to use if you don't know what you're going to color with. Maybe you're stamping a bunch of images to take with you on a road trip. Just use the amalgam ink because then if you decide to watercolor, you don't have to worry. But the dye ink will work with Gamsol and it will work with Copic markers. It will not work with watercolor because our dye inks are water reactive. So as soon as you put water on that ink, it's going to start to bleed and you don't want that. And then we have some different color amalgam inks. We have the black, which is great for, you know, when you want to really see the image and you want it to be black but we also have some beautiful colors for no line watercolor they're very light so check those out okay now this is going to go on to my white card base as well you can yes shelly you can use obsidian for anything so if it's the only one that you have the only thing you can't do is use it for a water reactive technique because it's not going to budge once it's dry and it does take maybe a minute or two more than the dye ink to dry but i just heat it up with my heat tool and then it dries really quickly all right so there are my two finished cards for tonight and you got to see how our inks are water reactive and how you can use them in a whole fun new way to create some fun backgrounds. All right, so let's give these cards away, Tom. All right, two cards coming up. Yes, so the first card we're gonna give away is the butterfly card. Drum roll. All right, <laughs> how about Jeanette Urato? All Jeanette. right, Jeanette. Yay, congratulations, Yay. Jeanette. Okay. And now we have, we'll call this the green and blue wildflower card. Okay. Let's right. do that for Elaine Zokowski Earn. All right, Elaine, Elaine, congratulations. Now remember, you guys, you can make these cards. So it's not like you can't have them, you can make them. Just you can follow along with this video. You can rewatch it a million times. It'll be it'll live on YouTube forever. All right, everybody. Well, for our winners, just make sure you send your name and which card you want to info at GinaKDesigns.com. And our customer service people will get that information to me and I will get it right out to you. Send your address too. All right, everybody. Well, this was so much fun tonight. I hope you learned a fun new tips and tricks. And uh, I hope you learned something new about our ink and you'll go and have a lot of fun with your Gina K Designs ink tonight in your craft room or tomorrow. Um, we will be back on Wednesday with another lunchtime live crafternoon with Tom and Gina. And uh, in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you all so very much. And we'll see you again mwah, real soon. Bye-bye.